Hi, I'm Eric Dirks. I have been accepted into the Trainer Challenge with the Retired Racehorse Training Project, and I'm very excited to show what these thoroughbreds can do with just good proper training. I think the thoroughbreds can be just as competitive in the equine world in show jumping, dressage, eventing, or even the hunter jumper industry, just as competitive as the warm bloods, if not even more. Good proper training is the key to making these thoroughbreds competitive. What I hope to demonstrate today is the basics of training the thoroughbreds. Not just thoroughbreds, but horses in general. We're gonna take this off the track thoroughbred that just raced and give it a different career. Regardless of the career, whether it be dressage, the hunter jumpers, or eventing, they all have to start off with the same basics, balance. Here we are, we have some windy conditions today. So this will be a good test for her. Uh, what I'd like to start off with is just a little in-hand work on the, on the line, on the lunge line. Just to let her back warm up. Um, she, of course, with, especially with a horse that's not used to uh, my weight and just used to a jockey's weight. So I would like to do a little in-hand work just to get a little bit of trust from the horse. Um, you can see I have some rails set up uh, and a tarp here. The, it's a windy condition so we have the poles on each side of the tarp. As I walk around the tarp, I'll walk on the tarp and that helps get the horse accustomed to it. You could almost tell which horses are going to accept the tarp even the best just from the, the look of their eye. Horses with a really small eye with a lot of white in the eye, they're very really leery about the tarp. But Brazil, she's got a really kind eye and when I introduced this the first time she walked right over the top of it and that's what I'm going to do right now. I just walked right alongside it the first time and now I'm going to walk right by it so that she walks over the top of it. There we go, very good and she accepts that tarp very well. Also note how I lead the horse. I try not to have too much tension in the rope or the lead shank than when you're leading the horse. You want the horse to take accountability for themselves, otherwise you get pulled around too, way too much. The more you could do a sharp correction and then give the lead line, the better. So the softer you can be and the fir more firm you can be without pulling on your horse, the more clear you're gonna be with your horse. After this, now I'm gonna put her on a circle, which is not very customary for the racehorse. The racehorse is used to going in a straight line. Well, now we're putting her on a small circle, and the reason why I'm putting her on this small circle is I observe how the horse finds their own balance. And then I want her to just kind of come to, to settle down to my aids. So to get her attention, right now her attention is on the barn a bit and everything around her, I'm going to ask her to walk. And I change my body language, just put my hand on top of the lunge line, encourage her to walk. And you see how I laid it to her initiative to walk. There was a loop in the lunge line when I just gave a squeeze and then I softened. When I softened, she went to the walk. So there's always a beginning and an end to the aid. Now I'm going to ask her to trot by just raising the tip of my whip. There, she's just learned this just from three days of lunging now. This is really good. So I just raised the tip of my whip and she trotted forward. Her very first time out here, she ran around frantic, but I didn't feed into it. I just get her accustomed to the circle and let her figure out her own balance. Now I'm gonna ask her to walk again. I just place my left hand on top of the lunge line, change my body language, set my shoulders to her nose, give her another little tug, oh, good, and there she walks again, nice and soft, very good. She's also starting to use her head and neck really nicely here. She's starting to stretch her head and neck more. When she first started, her neck was dropped like here. The base of the neck was dropped and her pole was way high. And so the bottom of the neck was always pushing out. Now she's starting to stretch her head and neck and use her back. I'm gonna ask her to trot once more, just raising the tip of my whip. There we go, very good, she reacted and she's becoming very sensitive to the aids. I always try to go forward with the horse. I don't want to back up away from the horse because backing up away from the horse shows t submission. You want to make sure that you, when you want the horse to go away from you on the circle that you're facing the horse 
and that you're not too far ahead of the horse. Now I'm going to go lunge around the tarp. So I'm going to move myself closer to the tarp so she lunges around it. This is how I use the tarp to help her from falling in. When she was falling in here to the left, this is what I would do. I would just lunge right around the tarp. Now we're going to try something a little bit more challenging. It's lunging over the top of the tarp. Slow it down again. Let's lunge right over the top of the tarp again. So there she fell in a bit. I'm going to make myself a little bit more clear with my body language to put myself between her and the tarp. There we go. And she's being a very good girl. There she fell a little bit to the inside of it. I'll slow it down. Oh, use my whip as an aid there. And then she trotted right over it. Now we're going to step away from the tarp. So you could see how well she accepted the tarp now. She's not shying away from it and she's respecting my aids on the circle. Her gait is also very good on the circle here. She is not, uh, she's not disengaged so far behind. She's figuring out her feet underneath her body to figure out her own balance. She is taking accountability of her own balance. And right there we just saw her even stretch her head and neck on her own a bit. This is very good. And now we're going to walk. I'll change my body language with my hand down on the lunge line. Give her a little tug. Oh, good. That's very nice. And now we could see that she is paying attention here. Her, 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 her ears are lopped off to the side. Her eye is not casting her too much around the arena. She's paying attention and her body language shows she's ready to be ridden. So, this is a time that I'll go ahead and take her in, give her a nice reward. And give her a big pet. Oh, oh. The other thing is these horses are not used to standing still for long periods of time, especially out in the open like this. So I wanted to start getting her comfortable with that. Usually the first couple times when we hop on our horse from the track, we have some assistance to hold the horse and make sure that you always lead the horse up away from the mounting block. They're not used to standing still. You'll, you'll see me do is I already have the stirrups down so I'm ready to hop on her the moment I get her between the mounting block and my obstacle that's there. I like to lead them in between the obstacles that they have something on both sides of them and they get comfortable with that pressure that there's objects on both sides of their body. I'll do that a couple times first before I hop on. I'm going to use the mounting block a little bit closer to this obstacle here on her right side so that when I hop on that I take away the possibility of her haunches drifting way right on me which makes it a lot harder to hop on her. So I do this again. I lead her in between the two objects let her stand here a little bit. Good. And you can see her discomfort here. Her lower lip is really acting up. There we go. And then I walk away. I don't make too big of a scene of it. I'll do this once more before I hop on. It's very important that you feel comfortable hopping on your horse. If you're nervous about the horse doing anything like bucking, the horse could sense it. You have to be a leader. Very good. That's a lot better standing there. Very good. You have to be a leader the moment you hop on and get on with it. Otherwise, if you shaky in the knees, the horse senses it and then they'll get cold backed as well. What I tend to do when I hop on is I'll grab the mane, have the reins already short enough, grab the mane, keep my chin way high because that's my sense of balance. That's my security and balance. There, she's starting to stand more comfortably. Very good. Nope. Get her comfortable here. And it all depends on the day too. Sometimes you need to have somebody assist you occasionally here. Very good. I'm going to let her stand off one more time yet. There we go. We're getting better though. You see again the way I lead her. There's hardly any tension in the rain. I try to be as soft as I can. 
There, she's starting to lower her head. She's showing me more comfort. Stand her once more. Sometimes I have to be quite firm to get her to stop. There we go. Oh. Slow down. That's a girl. I have my hands in the mane and put my foot over. The chin stays up, so I stay secure. Good. I'm not going to teach her to just stand there right away, especially when she hasn't fully accepted contact yet. If I make her stand with contact, that could be quite dangerous. Like you also noticed that I have not lunged with side reins. She, because she, she has to establish going forward, she, but she is getting close to the point where we can introduce side reins. So when I walk off now, I try to be as soft as I can with my hands to encourage the horse to stay in a forward motion. Horses are gonna find different ways to alter their balance or compensate with their balance. So you saw how she goes around a circle, she tends to fall in with her body. I like to let them walk for at least, you know, a nice 10 minute walk even, 10, 15 minute walk. Let them slow down their brain. We have jumps falling down, but she handled that very well. The wind blew down the jump and she handled it very well. So she's a little spooky about the jump here. And that's okay. We work around it. Notice how I don't make a big deal out of it. This is really showing what this horse is capable of with her temperament. She's got a wonderful temper. You see the second, first, almost first time around it and she's already almost up to it. I walk gently around it. I don't let the horses just stand there and sniff it. I think sometimes that makes a bigger deal out of what the situation. I tend to just keep them in motion, keep them moving forward, keep them walking forward. And then I'll work on bending her away from it even and, and, and see that she steps off my left leg. Come. Very good. Give her a nice reward too. Very good. And then the horse also gets used to getting rewards too. When they give me a little bit of improvement, rewarding the horse is very important. After she walks over this on her own, they are very good. And she kicked sand on top of it. She didn't spook. That was excellent. Very nicely done. I'm going to walk over the top of this rail. There's all kinds of stuff to keep it interesting for the horse. Otherwise, especially a horse that just came off the track, their brain is moving 100 miles an hour. They really are anticipating something else to happen. I like to do a lot of the work on top of the horse rather than on the lunge line with side reins because especially for a horse off the track they're so used to going in a straight ahead direction that um, putting them on a circle puts them on a very uncomfortable situation. And if I do use side reins they're very long so there's nothing forced when I work the horse. Very good. I'm going to walk the tarp the other way. So this is a very nice start. And then what I'm going to start doing is working on the contact. Now this is after now just about, we're close to a week of work. We're not even a week of work. She started on Wednesday because we had such bad rain. But look at how she's starting to accept contact. Very good. What I do with the contact, I don't right away put her head down. What I'm doing right now are lateral flexions. I squeeze and soften with my right rein as I even give up the left rein contact. I'll squeeze the right rein again and soft. Now this is not to get the horse's head down. This is just to get the horse to follow the rein, to get the horse submissively following the rein. There, very good. See when I squeeze the right hand, she bent to the right from the base of her neck. That was nice, very good. I give her a pat. Now I do the same thing to the left. This is such an improvement from when we first started. When I first started, she dropped the neck and the head was up straight up in the air. Now she's starting to accept the contact and look at a nice big breath of confidence.
I'll bend her left again and soften the right rein and look at how she follows the rein. I also apply the inside leg as well because it's really easy for the horse to fall left. Squeeze left and then I'm soft again. Very good. Now I feel the contact in both reins on the corners of the mouth and I'll encourage her to walk forward from my seat and leg and see how she figures that out. There we go. I'm pushing her to the contact so I'm not pulling the nose ever in. I'm actually trying to get the base of her neck to stretch forward to push the pole forward. So she starts using this top line. Right now you don't see much muscular development here because she hasn't used that part of her body yet. But the more I start getting her to stretch her top line, the looser her back gets so she gives me a better quality gait and she starts carrying the rider's weight better. There, very good. The bit I'm using too is a KK D-ring snaffle. I'm using a D-ring because it looks nice on her for a hunter. So we could tell which direction I'm heading with this horse. But the KK bit, it's, a, it's just a very mild bit. I, I don't like using leverage bits because it again uh, applies force. I want to make it that the horse uses their body on their own, that stretches using their muscles instead of uh, applying any kind of leverage that puts them in a false frame. I don't like using draw reins for the same purpose. Good, now the back is starting to open up. As she's stretching here, she's using her whole neck now. I can encourage her even to step up a little bit more forward, a little bit more active. So that I get bigger strides and you can see her overstep behind. What I mean by the overstep is that her hind legs step past the front footprint where she left the front footprint from the ground. There. That her whole body is swinging. There's no tension in her body. So we've been walking for about probably about oh, over five minutes now and we already have a way different walk. This is half the training here. If the horse is relaxed in the walk, more than likely he, she'll be relaxed in the rest of the three gates. I encourage her to walk over the rails to keep it interesting. Very good. Very good. Very nicely done. So now that we have a relaxed horse, now we're going to go ahead and do some trot work. Come. Good. We'll go around our jump that fell down here. It'll be easier to go around it and help me out with my left bend even too. So that was just thinking there. If I were to go to the inside of it, we could feel that the horse would fall in. Now I do the same process that I did in the walk. When I tr first trot, I just have a light contact in front of me. I'm not I'm not uh, forcing her head anywhere. And how I get the horse to stretch so easily is I'm always guiding the horse straight underneath me. You can feel the horse fall in, you can feel the horse fall out, and my legs keep the horse underneath me. So this is a nice start. Very good. Now I'm going to do some little neck flexions. Find that I get her supple in the jaw again. These neck flexions are not to get her head down, but just to get her following the bit. See, there, I didn't force her head down at all. I squeeze upward with my left hand and soften. The action of the bit, you have to always work upward, upward into the corners of the mouth. If you work downward, the bar, bit goes down on the bars in the mouth and then it's force applied. That's why I don't like using draw reins. It's, that's downward force on the bars of the mouth. I squeeze upward and there. She answers by going downward through the bridle and stretching. This stretching is way different than the horse dropping their neck. Stretching is different than the horse just lowering its neck. We want to get the neck to stretch from the base and already this is getting to be a very good example. So I'm not worried about her pole being high or her head being high. I'm more after getting her to stretch her neck forward. Now after I get a little bit of improvement here, I'm going to give her a walk break. There we go. There, she's giving me a nice bid here. This looks excellent. There we go. Always want to get a little bit more. There we go. Good. Now I'm going to ask her to walk. See, I have both reins and it's stretched up tall. 
give her a nice big pat. And you're gonna see her get better and better after every little walk break. Those walk breaks are important because then the horse starts getting an understanding. When a rider keeps looking for more and more to get, try to get something to perfection every time, the horse starts struggling and fighting and then they get tired and then they're wondering, what is this, what is this that you're asking me to do? Is this even fun anymore? All right, I'll try this off to the right a little bit. So I got what I wanted to the left. It was a nice little improvement. Was it perfect? No, but was she trying? Yes, and she was, she was actually improving. So now we're gonna to go to the right and do the same thing. Pick up the trot here. When I pick up the trot and I use my leg, I keep my knee open I try to keep my leg as long as I can down by the girth. If you pull up your leg, your leg goes in the wrong position on the horse. Then the horse is, you're not, it's not as effective. I just open up my toe and keep my leg down. Try not to lift up your heels. Now, her head is up. She's a little less comfortable going, going to the right. But I still keep the same forward cadence in the trot. Rarely am I ever going ho, ho, ho on a horse, even a real strong horse. I keep them marching forward. Look how she figured this out all out by herself. See that? See, they want to stretch because it'll be easier for them in the long run to carry my weight because I'm allowing her the option. Now, if I were to apply force to try to get her head down, she would just be tense, and then I would be accountable for her balance. She would not be accountable for any of her balance. Now that she's starting to stretch, you see the gait starting to get more rhythmic. There, you see that little bounce in her trot now? This is lovely. Look at that. See, now I softened the reins even, and she followed the contact. There we go, I'll do a little flexion right even. There, look at this, it's lovely. I'm gonna ask a little rein pressure there again. There, very good. See there, I even apply both reins, close my leg, and she stretched right into it. There, look at this stretch. This is gorgeous, and she's trying so much more. Very beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm so very happy because every day, we're gonna walk, good girl. We're gonna walk and um, every day she improves. Every day it's like building blocks. I'm always starting off where I left off. And this is why I get such a steady improvement in the horse is because I simplified. I'm not, I'm only asking what the horse is capable of and reading my horse. There, this is nice, good, good. Now I'm gonna encourage her to trot but I don't care whether or not her head is up or down going through that transition. She's not ready yet. As you could see from like the first video from the Expo Center, when we cantered, we almost cantered them falling into the canter to get the correct lead. Just like the trot transition there, I'm not expecting the trot transition to be through yet. For the trot to be a through trot transition, the horse has to fully accept contact. I'm at the stage of just getting the horse to loosen and stretch and be loose and, on, and take accountability for their own balance. So that's an important note. I'll repeat that again. Before we ask the horse to be through, through the transitions or whether in the gate, the horse has to be loose. So to request that a horse stays round through the transitions or to step through the transitions, the horse first has to be loose. Otherwise, they're gonna compensate in another way that we don't want them to. This is very good though. You see how this left hand now is better than when we first started? Big improvement. So I'm gonna ask her to even step the trot a little bit bigger. I encourage I trot a little bit bigger. You see my left hand occasionally opens up away from the neck. Just to bend her a little bit left. 
Very good. And I'll encourage that trot even a little bigger. And when I do this, the horse is stepping into a different comfort zone. The horse is, it's almost like going down the stairs in the dark. You don't know whether or not there's going to be another step. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing this horse bigger, getting the horse to let go of their body. They are good. There. You see the stride now is lengthening instead of getting faster. Very good. Especially when I get her neck stretching a bit more. And this is a fun game too. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to decrease the size of the circle and trot over the tarp and let her be on her feet so the game becomes fun. So I'm looking to my tarp right now. There we go. I'll slow down the trot just a bit because it may come up as a little surprise. There we go. Very good girl. Yeah. Just fun stuff for her. She's going to, when it comes to jumping, becomes more of a game. There we go. Good. Good girl. Always talking to my horse too. Nice and soft. So a little segment about talking to your horse. Here's how I talk to my horse. I'm always real soft with her, using a soft voice, but never going easy, 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 girl. I just go, yeah, come on, let's have some fun. Come on. Always rhythmical and going with her. So it's always a rhythmical conversation. Everything's a rhythmical conversation. There. Nice. See, now I'll use the tarp to my advantage to bend around the tarp. Look at, she's giving me a great effort for this bend. Very good, very good. And now we could talk throughness. She's starting to become through where you start to see potential power. Now I have some obstacles around my big circle here just to help out my her from falling in. When I ask for the canter, I'll ask for it approaching the wall to help me out. I'll keep her straight. I'm just going to encourage her forward to the transition. I'll keep a feel of the outside rein. Also, like this back. That's okay. She picked up the incorrect lead, and that's okay. And trot. Uh, not big into overcorrecting right away because we're going to instill confidence because every transition is beneficial and we'll try that again as we're approaching the wall this time she fell in that's why she got the incorrect lead she fell in a little bit so i'm going to give her a little bit more right bend and right leg canter there we go we got it that time and let's try to arrange myself closer and closer to the saddle and I do the same thing we did in walk and trot. First, get the horse going forward. This is a little behind my leg. Come, come. There we go. Do a little right bend and soft. So you see how unbalanced the canter is right now. She's cantering against me. But I try not to hold her up. I'm giving my contact away. And she's right now dropping the base of her neck and going to get there. Now she figured out her own balance. You see, when I softened the reins, she realized she couldn't balance against me. See right here, she's falling in a little bit, but then I soften again. Encourage her forward, doing a little right bend. There. So right now, you could, this is a good example of what I'm talking about when the horse stretches the bottom of their neck against my hands. You see how the base of her neck dropped? What I want to do is encourage her, her neck to stretch instead of drop. So I loosen her up a little laterally, flexing her right, give. He just wants her hand held. There we go, good, there, there, there. There was a good moment of balance there. Flex her right again and soften the reins. Yeah, see how she's dropping the neck? Just like the fat kid chasing the ho-ho again. Down a hill. There we go, flex a little right again and soften. Now we're starting to get some character to the canter, working with it. But again, all I want is improvement, so I'm happy with that. We're gonna just slow down this trot. So, I'm gonna work with that canter a little bit, I lied. 
because that was starting to show some nice improvement. Very good. All right, fun again. And give. Get the trot comfortable. Get a little bit of improvement. Flex the right again and give. You can see our strength now. It's getting a little tired. There we go. Good. Right there. There. Now she started giving up. Now I'm going to walk because I don't want her to get tired on me. I want her to always stay refreshed and have that happy look that she's giving me right now. She's got a nice happy look and she is going, okay, what do we want to do now? What is it that we're going to do now? Good. Very good. Well, this is Brazilian wedding and you could see why I chose the horse. It's got big, big ears, kind eye, really dark, beautiful eye, sleek looking body. She looks like a race car and yet she has some little bit of height to her, tall wither. Her wither goes halfway down the middle of her back, shows me good balance. Sturdy legs, big boned, but still a light built that makes her very athletic. The, the hard part about getting the horse to balance now from her job earlier, her job earlier was to race and the, the, when she raced, they drop their neck and go against the rider's uh, hand, against the rider's hand, going on one pace. Now, for the job that we want her to do, is she needs to be able to adjust her top line. She needs to be able to shorten and lengthen her top line, basically getting her to lower her center of gravity. Just like people, we lower our center of gravity from our head down to the ground. The more we lower our center of gravity, the more potential power we have. The more we could stay on our feet and be in balance, the more we can achieve a certain task, like jump, run, or throw a ball. What we want the horse to do is to be able to carry the rider's weight and establish three balance gates, walk, trot, and canter, and eventually test that balance out, even test the balance through shoulder in, lateral work, jumping, up and down hills, testing the balance for greater and greater strength. But the horse is naturally built not to carry, the ride, carry a weight of a rider. The rider sits in the back, they got a long heavy head and neck which all encourages them to be on the forehand. The way the horse lowers their center of gravity is from their tail to their nose because they're built on all four legs. But this has to be up to the horse. It cannot be forced. So if we were to take this whip as the outline of the horse here, all right, we would eventually want the, the outline to be nice and round. If this were the horse and this was the pole and my left hand was the rear end of the horse, we want to push the hind end going forward to the contact, creating a rounder picture of the horse carrying the weight of the rider the weight of the rider creating more potential power. We want her to stretch the, stretch the neck from the base, not to bring her nose in, but getting the neck to stretch out of her shoulder. And when she stretches the neck out of her shoulder, the back can relax. And then she uses her core muscles to carry the rider's weight. And then she's easily could swing from her haunches to propel her weight forward. This shows a charismatic, forward, free-moving horse.